we're going to be looking at exponential models. So originally, remember that an exponential is in the form of y equals a times b to the power of x. And you can decide whether or not this is going to represent an exponential growth or decay um, based on that rate. Now, when you're looking at this, sometimes you will be asked to determine that rate based on the equation. So for instance, let's say that we have y equals 6 times 1.0. Uh, 0, 4, 7 to the power of x. So looking at this situation, uh, we our rate here, or our b in general, is 1.047, which means that we are increasing or we have a growth. In order to find that rate, you're going to take that number and subtract 1 from it. The reason why is because that 1 represents 100% um, if you were to remove that decimal. So therefore, your rate here is going to be 0 0.047 or 4.7%. Okay, so that's just telling us our rate. Same thing could be said if you had y equals, um, let's go with a half, 0.965 to the power of x. Now, looking at this situation, we are less than 100%, which means that we're going to have an exponential decay. So same kind of concept in terms of um, how you find that rate a little bit. But instead of our number minus 1, it's going to be 1 minus that instead. And that right there is going to give us our rate then. So uh, we are decaying at that situation and at 3.5%. Um, we are going to be talking about those rates, exponential growth and decay, specifically when dealing with money. Um, there's two different types of money situations. We have what is known as compound interest. And this is where money is going to be compounded, either monthly, annually, um, weekly. It just kind of depends on the situation. Uh, this money is where the money that's, say, you're in your account is going to grow at, say, 0.6%. So that, that money keeps getting added. The bank is wanting you to put money in their account because it's helping them. So they're going to give you some money back for that, and that's using a compound interest formula generally. This is in the form of A equals P times 1 plus R over N to the power of NT. So let's talk about what all of this stuff means. A is your amount after. P is your principal or initial deposit. Misspelled principal, wrong one. My bad. R is your rate. N is number of compounds. And T is time in years. Okay. So, for instance, story problem. I'm actually going to type this out so it goes a little bit faster and you can read it. Um, so let's say, for instance, if I can find my mouse, sorry, wrong screen. Stacy deposits $4,500 into a savings account that earns 4, let's not do 4.5. Um, 2.75% compounded quarterly. How much does she earn after 10 years? Okay, 
So with this being said, we are going to use that formula and just substitute our information in it and just calculate it. So it's kind of a plug and chug type of method and that's great. So looking at this, P is at 4,500, N quarterly, which means for our rate, it's a percentage, so we'll actually have to change that into a decimal, so it's going to be 0 0.0275, T is 10. So now, we just plug it right into that formula. Hardest part is making sure that if you're typing it into a regular calculator that you typed it in correctly. Personally, it's probably easier to use this on Desmos because you can see what is in your exponent and what is not in your exponent. So like I said, just plugging in my information. And then you just calculate that. So I'm just typing this in right now since I can't do that in my head. And we would get $5,918.82. So after 10 years, there's a good gain there. Um, and that's just because of the rate that the money is compounded and the number of times that it's compounded. So just something to think about there. There is a, another formula. If it is compounded continuously, we have a different formula. A equals P to the power, PE to the power of RT. E is a number. Okay, so we got to do some little side stuff here. E is a number of 2.71 eight dot 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 so it's kind of like pi how pi has a number that just keeps on going and repeats same concept e is just a number i will show you how to find that on a calculator as far as desmos you can just type in the letter e um, so let's look at an example here again i will type this one out to make it a little bit faster instead of me writing it out so Let's go with John deposits $7,000 into an account that earns 3.5% compounded continuously. How much is in the account after 15 years? Shrink that up a little bit. All right, so we just plug this information right into our formula, and then we just calculate. So 7,000 is our initial deposit. E to the power of 0 0.035 times 15 there. And like I said, just make sure that you have, notice the exponent, I've been plugging that in. Um, with parentheses, that way I don't get something screwed up. And I have something off here. Oh, something's off because I forgot a zero on a 7,000. It was less money, so I was goofed up there. So when it's compounded continuously, you make more money over the long run. Initially, it won't look like if you're compounded like monthly, it won't look like you're gaining that much value, whether it's compounded continuously or monthly, but over time, that does make a huge difference. Um, with that said, I've got one more thing, and that's looking for a um, looking for an equation based on two points. Let's say I have a point at 685 and at 
7 comma 92. This only works right now if you have two consecutive points. So notice I go from 6 to 7. Um, the B value is Y2 over Y1. So you have 92 over 85 to give us 1.082 roughly. Um, so this is our B value. We then can pick a point in order to find that A because this is X and that's Y. So we have 85 equals A times 1.082 to the power of 6. So we can actually just calculate this and then divide it. Um, when we do that, we get an approximation for A to be about 52.97. I'm just going to round that up to 53. So our equation is then Y equals 53, 1.082 to the power of x. So again, just some basic algebra there. Um, again, this only works if you have two consecutive points in order to find that ratio. Otherwise, you're going to have to use a regression model on Desmos.